My name is Kate, and I would like to talk about my great-grandfather, Ormus Ernest Bates, Jr. Ormus was born in Carston, Alberta, Canada on March 28, 1894. He was the second child of ten, born to Ormus Ernest Bates, Sr. and Jane Eliza Wolf. At the time, Cartston was a small village made of log homes. One of his first recollections was boxes set on end to serve as furniture, and the wood floor was covered with straw and then with woven rugs. He remembers going with his father to Lethbridge. He had rented a hotel room, and when his father turned the switch on the wall, light came on the, in the ceiling. He says he would have pushed that button indefinitely had his father not stopped him. To him, that was a miracle. Ormus and his family were members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. When Ormus was about 12 years old, he was on his on fast Sunday morning. He says a feeling of great depression came over him. He tried to change his feelings to a happier mood without success. He attended the meeting and listened to others bear their testimonies of the gospel. As he left the building and went out on the street, he recalls that his heart was filled to overflowing and it was a great contrast to the feelings he had when he entered the building. This caused him to ponder as to what made the great difference in his change of feelings. He recounts that it seemed impossible for him to change his feelings by his own efforts and that the great change was caused by the Spirit of the Lord. He recounts that he knew within himself that he knew there is a God and His Spirit influences us. He kept that testimony throughout his life. His father was a great sportsman, and he always kept the table supplied with wild game such as prairie chickens, ducks, and geese, and an abundant supply of fish. On rare occasions, he brought home a deer or mountain sheep. He also raised an excellent garden to which Ormus had to help take care of. Weeds that were pulled from the garden were carried to the hogs. His father also raised chickens and turkeys. He recounts that one night he was awakened by a great commotion. Their turkeys were flying from rooftop to rooftop. When they went to investigate, there were coyotes in the yard trying to catch the turkeys. Armus also tells a story about his father going fishing in February. Father and a few companions went to the Belly River lakes to fish through the ice. They hardly made camp when a very severe blizzard came up and turned very cold. It was about 30 degrees below zero. They went ahead and cut holes in the ice and caught fish, and as the fish were thrown on the ice, they froze almost immediately. When father brought the fish home, he instructed Ormus to put the fish in a tub of water to thaw so that they could clean them. To Ormus's great surprise, as the fish thawed, they started flopping around in the water and splashed water on the floor. He was so startled to see the dead fish come to life. Ormus received a call from President Joseph F. Smith to serve a mission in, the, in West Virginia, which he did. He served for two years and was asked to extend for another six months, but as it was during World War I, his parents needed him to come home and work the farm. He served another three months before heading home. Soon after he returned home, he started corresponding with Garnet Pinson, whom he had met in West Virginia, and asked her to become his wife. They were married in Chicago, Illinois on October 9, 1919. After they were married, Ormus returned to Carston. He worked many jobs, but at the beginning of the 1930s, work was hard to find. Ormus managed to get a job with the Carston School as a caretaker. He worked there for 34 years and retired at the age of 73. Ormus and Garnet had seven children. Garnet passed away in May of 1974. Ormus passed away February 22, 1990.